एवरी वन वेलकम टू वाजराम एंड रवीज टर्म्स इन न्यूज माई नेम इज शुभांगी सिंह एंड टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स दैट हैव बीन इन न्यूज फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एग्जाम सो लेट अस बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट टर्म दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू टूडे दैट इज एजेंटिक ए आई सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस we have seen an upgraded version in form of agentic ai basically it refers to artificial intelligence systems only but these systems are capable of taking autonomous actions and they can easily achieve goals without continuous human intervention so if you are talking to a ai model may be chat gpt be google gemini you have to give continuous human instructions and then you get the results but in this situation in this particular system agentic ai you set a specific goal that can be achieved without continuous instructions so this will be very helpful in planning task is executing multi steps action self correct the outputs if they are wrong and get into context based questions as well for a cl clearer understanding but when we talk about agentic ai it is very different from traditional ai because this is movement from passive response to a directly goal directed behavior for example when we are talking about agentic ai or ai agents they can help in scheduling meetings trading stocks then writing and deploying code and managing workflows based on a certain goal that needs to be achieved now this has been in news because we have just seen microsoft has tied up with tcs infosys and wipro to boost agentic ai in india and when we talk about agentic ai it becomes of extreme significance because of the economic impact that it holds because when we are talking about automation and specially of the repetitive white collar work be it emails accounting scheduling coding etc yes it increases the efficiency but at the same time there is still question that how the jobs will be taken over by ai there is a potential that agentic ai can add billions to specially to india's digital economy through productivity gains but at the same time the question of employment and harm to the human jobs still remains other than that another aspect that has come out is the governance application in terms of automation will ensure that compliance check beneficiary verification public grievances redressal this can be done in a better manner and it can not just support the governance but it can actually help in achieving goals related to governance be it digital health taxation policing and also supply chain monitoring other than that there are certain risks and concerns around it where when we are talking about autonomous work there will be autonomous errors also which can lead to financial losses which can lead to misinformation spread there can be security lapses as well and this will require a proper mechanism which sets a proper audit and explainability and also bring in liability to the agentic ai that we are relying we might be relying in the coming times so much and this directly adds it to a security dimension the fact that when we are talking about autonomous access this will be available to sensitive data and tools and that is why as much as there is a lot of scope and opportunity for agentic ai there is also a requirement to put in the guardrails to bring in explainability and also accountability around it now we will be moving on to the next term that we are doing today that is solar storm so solar storm is basically a massive eruption of charged particle that is plasma magnetic fields and this radiation burst takes place from the sun now when we are talking about a solar storm it might contain just solar flares or a combination of solar flares and coronal mass ejections and also geomagnetic storms are created when coral mass ejections they hit earth's magnetic field as well so solar storm is nothing but a eruption of charged particles magnetic fields energy from sun itself now when we are talking about solar storm they have been when we are talking about solar storms they are something that that can go ahead and actually not just disturb earth's magnetic field but also impact the electricity grids gps satellites radio communication and aviation as well 
and solar storms are measured using kp index that means if there is a severe storm on the index it will be around kp 7 to 9 recently it has been in news because india's aditya l1 which is one of our first solar missions has joined the global effort in the landmark solar storm study now when we are talking about solar storm it becomes important for us to understand this because this is directly related to national security how it is related to national security because extreme solar storms they can impact defense communication navigation reliability and also missile guidance and it directly disrupts isr that is intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance satellites it also has associated economic and infrastructure risk such as the instability that might be caused in power grids leading to large scale blackouts it can affect the whole telecom infrastructure and maritime navigation as well as banking networks and there will be impact on aviation as i said it might risk the polar flights lead to communication losses as well in order to address them it becomes important that we understand what is the solar storm and the global study that has been going on and now that has been joined by aditya l1 as well and that is why we also need to understand that how it can impact indian space assets because when we are talking about solar storms they directly cause satellite orbit decay that means there is a natural loss of altitude and also the speed of the satellite and if that is happening it can lead to collisions it also as i said affects the navigation and also nav ic satellites remote sensing satellites which are important for agriculture and disaster responses and the amount of investment that has gone in these that also goes to waste so in such a scenario it is required that satellite safe mode operations need to be put in place other than that there is a direct scientific as well as policy significance because it emphasizes that we need for space weather prediction capabilities the earth weather prediction capabilities are not just enough if we want to protect our assets in the space space weather prediction is also important this also highlights that how our solar mission aditya l1 has enhanced our capability in monitoring and understanding solar winds and storms and also it is very important for designing resilient telecom as well as power grid systems it becomes absolutely pertinent from the pur purview of your exam to look into not just solar phenomena but also the science and tech and isro's effort that have been taken in this direction now we will be moving on to the next term that we are doing today and that is cosmic filament when we are talking about the word cosmic filament it means a long thread like structure but this structure is of galaxies so you can imagine galaxies have been threaded and they have been brought together and it can be galaxies and dark matter and this is what forms the whole cosmic web so when we are talking about the largest known structures in the universe which are present across hundreds and millions of light years this these are cosmic filaments now the reason we are talking about cosmic filament Now, now the reason we are talking about cosmic filament that recently the royal economic society has highlighted that a teacup like spinning structure has been seen and it is one of the largest that has been seen in the universe when we are talking about such a concept you have to understand that the significance here becomes much more higher because these are the bigger things that give us a direct perspective into understanding how our universe has evolved now these filament cosmic filaments they are basically the highways for how exactly the matter has flown and the galaxy formation has taken place it explains how early universe structures have formed especially after the big bang and if better understanding comes out more evidences for the big bang theory remain in place other than that they also directly help in understanding dark matter physics filaments they are primarily composed of dark matter so they help in understanding the measure distribution and this is absolutely fundamental 
in terms of understanding dark matter theories just beyond the standard model. Now on this note, we will be moving on to the next term that we are covering today. That is open market operations. So if we talk about open market operations, basically you have to again think about the monetary policy tools which are at the discretion of RBI and they are two types. They are of two types. First we have qualitative tools and then we have quantitative tools. And in the quantitative tools, we have open market operations. Basically, it is about buying and selling of government securities. But the, this buying and selling is not done by government. Rather, it is done for government by RBI on their behalf in the secondary market. Now, when we are talking about buying and selling securities, let's just say there is a government security and RBI is selling it. So, this security for this security and if you are ready to buy it, then you will be paying some amount in very simple terms. You will be paying some amount and RBI will be giving that security to you. So, that means when RBI is selling securities, it is taking the cash from the public. That means in this scenario, liquidity decreases when RBI is selling securities. But when RBI is buying securities, you have the security and RBI is taking it from you. So RBI would pay for that. In that scenario, liquidity increases. And that is why open market operations are used as a tool by RBI to manage liquidity, to control the interest rates that exist in the economy and also guide monetary policy transmission. Now recently the repo rate has been cut by 25 basis points. Can you tell me in the comment section what is the present repo rate that has been taken up by RBI at the neutral stance? In the last session of terms and news I had discussed repo rate as well. Now when we are talking about OMOs that is open market operation as I said there will be two type OMO purchase that will increase the liquidity and OMO sale that will absorb the liquidity that means liquidity will decrease when RBI is selling and when RBI is buying liquidity will increase and they have a marked difference from how repo rates impact the liquidity because repo rate impact the liquidity in the market in the short term but when we are talking about the government securities they have a long term impact in terms of liquidity in the market. Now this has been in news because RBI has conducted rupees 1 lakh crore OMO during December only to inject liquidity. So if we are saying there has been injecting of liquidity that means RBI has done purchase. Now when we are talking about such terms they become important for us because open market operation as a tool is very important for macroeconomic management. It not only helps to regulate long term liquidity, it is also very important for controlling inflation in a calibrated and long term way. Other than that, it also helps in bringing stability to the bond market. How, how it helps here? Because open market operations directly are related to the government securities and they maintain orderly movement in government bond yields. They directly signal RBI's policy stance and this shows that if RBI is in injecting liquidity or reducing liquidity, it impacts the corporate as well as the state borrowing rate based on the open market operations as well. Other than that, related to open market operations, we get also get to see that banking sector liquidity is also impacted. Open market operations ensure that there is a proper credit flow to businesses and agricultures. They stabilize liquidity, especially during tax outflows, festival spending and global shock. And they also play a huge role in fiscal policy co co coordination because it helps in smoothening center and state borrowing programs because this is where the government securities are used for. It helps in preventing yield spikes which increase fiscal deficit burden and it also contributes to the financial market development and it comes directly relevant for your exam especially when we are talking about monetary policy instruments.
now on this note we will be moving to the next term that we are going to do today that is smart blue harbors so what exactly are these harbors when we are talking about ports which are digitally enabled which are ecologically sustainable when we are talking about port ecosystems which are not just digitally enabled but they are also ecologically sustainable and modern they are referred to as smart blue harbors now these are such harbors which integrate the blue economy principles the smart automation and also ensure low carbon maritime logistics so when we are talking about blue economy principles these are the principles which focus on the sustainable uses of the ocean that focuses on the ocean health not just of the economic advantage that we can talk get from oceans now in this very context when we are talking about smart blue harbors they are the ones which have ai based port management water quality sensors coastal ecosystem protection renewable en renewable energy is present there and deep sea biodiversity mapping is also present the whole idea of the smart blue harbors is to create an efficient sustainable and also a climate resilient port and this has been in news because in gujarat it is the leading state which is looking into india smart blue harbors revolution as of now now when we talk about the significance of smart blue harbors they are the ones that bring in economic efficiency how because these harbors have smart sensors which reduce the cargo delta time this improves the turn around time the efficiency of any harbor depends on the turn around time and this is where the reduced time will help in reducing the logistics cost as well this will help in reducing india's logistic cost which is currently 13 to 14% of gdp which is more than twice the, the global average the global average lies somewhere between 7 to 8% it also helps india to promote and expand maritime trade beat under sagarmala beat under pm gati shakti it brings environmental protection again back in focus because it focuses on preventing any sort of coastal pollution making sure that water quality is maintained it uses renewable energy and that is why the port emissions are reduced and it supports preservation of mangroves coral reefs and estuarine ecosystem as well that means when we are looking for economic efficiency we are not compromising on environmental protection at the same time other than that it directly facilitates blue economy development i have just explained the blue economy principle that means we get to boost fishery aquaculture marine tourism but at the same time we are not compromising on the ocean health so we get improved harbors we get better port facilities and we get benefit for fisher community as well and it directly helps us in enhancing our geopolitical role because it will enhance our presence in indian ocean region it will counter china's maritime influence it will help in making our green shipping corridors which will also help us in enhancing our security and governance stance now that was all for today thank you so much